How to rewrite your cat's brain, nine proven protocols. Your cat forgets where they hid their toy, but they never forget how you make them feel. Right now, your cat is writing a neurological memoir about you. Modern feline psychology and cat behavior science confirm that cats possess episodic-like memory. They don't just remember food, they remember emotional peaks. But here is the terrifying part. Most owners are accidentally traumatizing their pets because they don't speak the language of feline biology. You might think you are showing affection, but you might actually be triggering their fight-or-flight response. In this video, we are breaking down the nine specific acts of love, backed by MRI scans and ethological data, that will strengthen the bond with your cat forever. Number one reveals a secret button on their head that lowers stress hormones. And number nine, well, number nine is the hardest conversation you will ever have, but it is the ultimate proof of love. Let's rewrite your cat's brain. Protocol number one, the love button, the temporal gland. Let's start with physical touch. You probably pet your cat on the top of their head or scratch behind the ears. That's fine, but you are missing the biological jackpot. There is a specific spot that carries 10 times more emotional significance than anywhere else on their body. It is called the temporal gland. It sits right here in the soft, thinning fur between the corner of their eye and their ear base. Why is this spot so critical? When a mother cat grooms her kittens, she focuses obsessively on this exact area. It is the first sensation of safety a kitten ever experiences. Research from Oregon State University suggests that cats who receive tactile stimulation in this specific zone show a measurable drop in cortisol, the stress hormone, by up to 40%. But it goes deeper. This area is packed with scent glands. When you rub this spot with a gentle circular motion using just your fingertip, two things happen. First, you trigger a massive release of oxytocin, the bonding hormone. Second, you are engaging in scent exchange. You are mixing your scent with their pheromones. To a cat, this isn't just a massage. It is a claim of ownership. You are telling them, we are the same entity. You are creating a social odor memory that gets written permanently into their nervous system. Don't just pet them. Mark them with your love. Protocol number two, the cat kiss, the slow blink. Now that you've touched them, you need to look at them, but you are probably doing it wrong. In the primate world, our world, direct eye contact is a sign of attention and respect. In the feline world, a prolonged stare is a threat. It is a predator signal. If you stare at your cat to show affection, their amygdala, the fear center of the brain, lights up. They wonder, why is he targeting me? Am I prey? To say I love you in cat language, you need to master the slow blink sequence. A landmark study by the Universities of Sussex and Portsmouth proved that this is the feline equivalent of a genuine human smile. Here is the protocol. Look at your cat when they are relaxed. Slowly narrow your eyes as if you are sleepy. Close them for half a second. Open them slowly and look away slightly. This breaks the predator stare. You are biologically signaling, I am vulnerable to you because I trust you not to hurt me. The study showed that cats are significantly more likely to approach a human after a slow blink than a neutral expression. Don't just look at your cat. Blink. It's the only kiss they truly understand. Protocol number three, the neural voice, the auditory cortex. We have touched. We have looked. Now we must speak. Your cat needs something from you that has nothing to do with food. They need your narrative. Japanese researchers using fMRI scans discovered that cats who are spoken to regularly develop a physically thicker auditory cortex. The part of their brain that processes human speech actually grows new neural pathways. Conversely, cats in silent homes show brain patterns similar to hearing loss. Their brains atrophy from a lack of stimulation but here is the catch. Tone matters. Stop the baby talk. That high-pitched, squeaky voice we use for cute things. To a cat, high-frequency sounds mimic the distress cries of a wounded animal or a lost kitten. It increases anxiety. 
not love. They crave a conversational tone, the deep rhythmic voice you use with a friend. Tell them about your bad day at work. Explain why you are opening a can of tuna. Describe the weather. They recognize the cadence of communication. In multi-cat households where humans rarely speak to the pets, cats can develop selective mutism. They stop vocalizing because they have learned that sound does not equal connection. Talk to them like they are your roommate, not your baby. Their brain is listening. Protocol number four, the hunting fulfillment. Act number four is about fulfilling their deepest biological drive. You think you are playing with your cat, but your cat is not playing. Your cat is hunting. Inside your living room, your cat is still a lethal predator with a 95% kill rate in the wild. When you use a laser pointer, you are torturing them psychologically. Why? Because they can chase, but they can never catch and kill the red dot. This creates a dopamine loop without closure, leading to frustration and behavioral issues. To truly love your cat, you must simulate the complete predatory sequence. Stare, stalk, chase, pounce, kill and eat. Use a wand toy, make it move like a mouse, hiding it behind corners, not flying like a helicopter. Let them catch it, let them kill it. And here is the secret sauce. Feed them immediately after play. This completes the biological cycle. Hunt, kill, eat, sleep. This is called the boil and simmer method. If you do this, you aren't just entertaining them. You are chemically satisfying their predator instincts leading to a profound sense of satisfaction and confidence that no amount of cuddling can provide. Protocol number five, the morning check-in. Let's talk about what happens while you are trying to sleep. Between 5 and 7 a.m., your cat performs a specific ritual called social checking. In the wild, when the sun rises, the colony wakes up. The first instinct is to check, is everyone here? Did everyone survive the night? University of Georgia researchers documented that how you respond in these first 10 seconds shapes their entire day. If you ignore them, push them away, or cover your head with a pillow, you are rejecting the colony bond. Cats who are ignored during morning checks show increased hiding behavior and higher cortisol levels for the next 16 hours. They don't need a party. They need an acknowledgement, a sleepy good morning, a hand stretched out for a sniff or a slow blink. That's it. This tiny gesture confirms the social structure. It tells them, the colony is intact. We are safe. If you consistently ignore this, their brain begins a process called synaptic pruning. They physically lose the neural connection that expects intimacy from you. Don't prune the bond. Acknowledge them. Protocol number six, the respect of limits, the petting threshold. True love isn't just about what you do. It's about what you stop doing. Every cat has a petting threshold. This is a neurological limit where pleasure turns into pain. Have you ever seen your cat's skin ripple or their tail flick while you're petting them? That is not a mood swing. That is the cutaneous trunchy reflex. Their nerve endings are becoming overstimulated. The sensation of touch is turning into electric static. If you keep petting them because they look so cute, you are teaching them that you are unsafe. You are creating a trust debt. But if you stop the second you see a tail flick, magic happens. Their brain releases GABA, a neurotransmitter that calms the nervous system and reinforces trust pathways. They learn, my human listens to my body language. This creates predictive comfort. They will actually come to you more often because they know they have an exit strategy. Respecting the no is the highest form of love. Protocol number seven, the departure ritual. You are likely traumatizing your cat every time you leave the house without realizing it. Cats suffer from pre-departure anxiety. They know the triggers, the shoes, the keys, the bag. Their heart rate spikes by 30% before you even open the door. If you just walk out, you leave them in a state of chaos. You need a departure ritual. This anchors their hippocampus, the memory center, and provide security. Do the same thing every time. Say a specific phrase like, guard the house, I'll be back. 
toss a specific high-value treat in a specific spot. By doing this, you change the narrative from my human is abandoning me to this is the routine where I get a treat and then nap. It provides predictive security. MRI scans show that the amygdala remains calmer in cats who can predict their owner's behavior. Don't let your absence be a void. Make it a routine. Protocol number eight, the sick vigil. This next act of love is counterintuitive. When your cat is sick, your instinct is to hover, to touch, to constantly check on them. But sick cats in the wild isolate themselves. They need to conserve energy. However, they also need social proximity without interaction. University of California, Davis found that the mere presence of a bonded human can improve recovery rates, but only if the human is calm. This is psychoneuroimmunology in action. If you constantly poke them or look worried, they absorb your stress, which suppresses their immune system. The greatest act of love for a sick cat is to sit in the same room, a few feet away, and do something boring. Read a book, work on your laptop, be a silent, calm anchor. Your passive presence triggers the release of immunoglobulin A, an antibody that fights infection. You are literally helping them heal by just being there quietly. Protocol number nine, the final permission. And finally, we reach the act of love that breaks our hearts, but frees their souls. Cats are masters of masking pain. It is an evolutionary survival mechanism. But when the end is near, this instinct becomes a prison. They often hold on, fighting the natural process because they sense your distress. Veterinary thanatologists, experts in end-of-life care, have documented a profound phenomenon. Cats need permission to go. When you know the time has come, you need to have a conversation. You need to verbalize it. Sit with them, regulate your breathing, and tell them, it's okay, you have been the best cat, I will be fine, you can go now. It sounds spiritual, but the physiological effects are real. After this permission is given, vets often observe a drop in the cat's heart rate and a release of tension in their muscles. They stop fighting. Creating this emotional hospice is the hardest thing you will ever do. But it is the ultimate repayment for a lifetime of companionship. You are taking on the pain of saying goodbye so they can let go of the pain of living. A cat's love isn't loud. It isn't a wagging tail or a bark. It is a slow blink. It is a head pressed against your hand. It is the quiet trust that you will keep them safe. Now I have a question for you. Look at your cat today. Which of these nine acts have you been missing? Are you staring instead of blinking? Are you ignoring the morning check-in? Tell me in the comments below. Let's build a community that speaks the true language of cats. If this video helped you understand your companion better, please like and subscribe, because understanding them is the only way to truly love them. I'll see you in the next video.